the next thing I want to do is hook up these two stepper motors to the bottom two rails and see how they handle moving it up and down. Um, so I'm coming back to this because I have to set up, do a little bit more setup here because I, these two motors have to be cloned so that they do exactly the same movements. Uh, so I've put the fourth A A4988 driver board, daughter board on there, and they're all set to do the same micro stepping, which is quarter steps, I think it was. And I've got this little <coughs> uh, voltmeter set up here because while I'm doing this, I also want to set the current limiting for each of the um, stepper drivers to make sure that these motors don't get too much current. And these motors I've got here are a little bit wimpy, I think, so it's quite likely that I might need to get some stronger motors in the future, but we'll see how it goes with these ones for starters. And this is this is the one that I've got here. It's a 1.8 degree NEMA 17, and the current for this one is listed as 1.33 amps per phase, which is not much really, is it? But it should be plenty for, I mean, these drivers should be able to at least supply all of that. So um, we're only limited by the motor at this point. If I do get some larger motors, I'm probably going to have to get rid of this and get some uh, stronger, um, higher current stepper drivers as well. Anyway, for now, uh, if you look at the, where are we? If you look at this page, which is the page I've been looking at to get information about these stepper drivers there's a pretty good video showing exactly how to adjust the current limiting for them well if you watch this video here Claire will show you how to do it but she's using a different driver um, so for this particular one it's slightly different but fortunately I found that it's uh, almost the same so the way you do it is by checking the voltage on something called the, oh geez, where is it? Current limiting, here we go. All right, so this is this is the, um, the important part here. Uh, so you check the voltage on a certain pin, and in this case, my board doesn't have that pin exposed as a, as a pin on the board somewhere, but fortunately, it is exposed as the top of this potentiometer which is why I've got my voltmeter clipped onto a tiny little screwdriver so that as I touch this and turn it I can see the voltage on the top of that potentiometer there so it's 0 0.57 volts at the moment and if we go back to that page we'll see that the current limit is going to be that VREF voltage that we just saw multiplied by 2.5 um, which is going to be more than the 1.3 amps that I want so to check what I want um, so I want this to be 1.3 which means that it's going to be um, so that means this is going to be 1.3 divided by 2.5 which is if we just quickly do that oops 1.3 Five, so 0 0.52 is what I want for for these particular motors here. Um, another motor that I have is slightly different. It can take a little bit more current. So I'm going to use these ones, which are the slightly weaker ones for the y-axis, because they're going to work together. So they'll be sharing the load. And the one that runs across the gantry horizontally, that will be the motor that's a little bit stronger. Uh, so 0 0.52 volts is what I want on... The Y, which is top right, and the A, which is going to be cloned. So these two over here, I want that to be 0 0.52. And which way do we go? Okay, that'll do. And the other stepper motor that I have that I bought ages ago is one of these, Sane Smart blah 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 and then uh, that when I look that up it seems to be made of a little bit sturdier stuff because this one can take two amps per phase which means that we are going to be looking at two divided by 2.5 oh, 0.8 hmm 
that's going to be right on the limit of these, isn't it? What do they say these can do? 2 amps per coil with sufficient additional cooling. Alright, so let's let's make it a little bit lower than that. Let's make it 1.8 amps. So 0 0.72 volts on the Y axis. Oh no, on the X. This is 0 0.72. And then for the Z axis, I think that motor is the same as these others, so I'll make that 0 0.52 as well. Okay, so that's all hooked up now. It seems to be working all right. And as I mentioned in one of my earlier videos, to clone one of the axes to the A axis, you need to connect these jumpers on the left hand side here. So you can see the second row is Y axis. And I've just put a couple of long um, wires to connect those. I'll probably make something a little bit tidier later on. Could probably even just put a little bit of solder bridge across them to connect them. That might be tidy enough. And if I try this, you'll see that they move in unison. So I'm going to have to shift all this out to the garage now. So I think this is the last time I'm going to be able to film doing stuff on the computer at my desk here with my main computer. And so I'm going to take this laptop out to the garage and set it up there to use to jog the motors up and down and check that everything's working all right. Um, so I've been getting the environment set up on this computer. And while I was at it, I looked into a little bit more convenient way of controlling the motors and the first thing I came across was this thing called G-Code Sender which is a, a Chrome web app so you can get this from the Chrome web store and it just fits into your Chrome browser and I couldn't get it to work on Linux unfortunately not even as the root user not really sure why it wouldn't connect to the Arduino but on Windows it works okay which is fine because this is the computer I'm going to be using anyway which is Windows and so this is working quite good seems to have a bug when you click on here that it goes to not a number there <laughs> but you can fix it by grabbing hold of the slider and moving it so you can just change the distances of each jog click like that okay so everything is all set up now seems to be okay you can hear a little bit of rattling from these lead nut uh, constructions <laughs> somewhere in there. Not sure exactly what it is. I think it's just that the screws are a little bit loose. But I don't think it's a problem because they don't really need to be tight. They just need to not um, turn around in those lock nuts. <laughs> So uh, I found that I could tighten everything up and it would be fine except for this last, oops, this last little grub screw in there. There's a couple of grub screws that hold the screw uh, firmly in the bearing. And if I tried to do those up, I got a little problem. Um, I'm not sure if it might be actually this lead screw is a little bit bent maybe, but it would sort of kind of move like this a little bit as it was winding just a tiny little bit so I'm just going to leave this undone these screws are here solid so it's, it can't move up and down and off side to side but it can move sorry <laughs> it can move just a little bit that way within that bearing but I don't think that's a problem because it's fixed solid at that end and now I've got to do this all over again get everything straightened up and moving freely and smoothly and everything. Seems like the best way to do this is to just gradually go around tightening everything up. Keep, it, keep moving it like this all the time while you're every now and then just tightening up one screw somewhere here, somewhere or other. <laughs> and eventually you should get them all tight and it should stay free to move as well. Can't think of any better way to do it. 
I'm having trouble with these things again. The little washer that I was using before to shim it a little bit. Unfortunately it's too small and it fits actually fits inside that gap there like that and then it doesn't work properly as a shim so I'm going to try something that somebody mentioned to me in the comments which is to use an aluminium can and this is about it's just under half as thick as the washer so I'll have to fold this a few times but it should give me quite a nice you can't really see how thin it is but it's quite thin and this will give me a really easy way to adjust to get it just to the right height that I need and because it's, I cut it to whatever shape I need it's not going to be too small to fall under there okay that worked out alright so now we have two axes going and I also changed something in the settings to say that the motors should A little bit noisy, isn't it? There. Uh, I changed the setting in the durable um, parameters to say that the motors should not stop, or they should stay powered when everything stops. So now I can't move anything because the motors are holding everything fixed. Um, and that means that now we're here there's sort of a high-pitched whining kind of a noise coming from the motors because they're continuously being powered although it's not constant current it's switched being switched off and on because it's quarter steps so um, yeah they will be getting a little bit warm after a while I think the only one that seems to be getting a slight bit warm is this one the ones at the bottom are not even warming up at all um, but the side effect of course is you get this kind of whining noise that's really becomes quite irritating after a while so I think I would only be turning the power on at the last moment um, before I start to run it just because it's a little bit irritating so I'm not sure if you can hear that noise but I'll switch it off here when I switch it on sometimes I get a bit of a twitch from the motors uh, I guess it depends if they were out of that step position when you turn it on it would twitch them a little bit to get them into that position that they're supposed to be in just getting the last axis on now it's looking good it's fairly smooth okay got this one on now motors all set up everything looks good as usual took two or three times to uh, put it on undo it all adjust something put it on undo it adjust something put it back on etc Anyway, it looks good now, and I discovered the key functions for this too, so you can just hit a hit the arrow keys to move move things. Now with the Z axis, I have to be careful with the one centimeter, but here we go. Sounds good. The other ones don't sound so good, they sound a bit scratchy, vibrate rather. Okay, I'm going to have a go at running a program using this G-code sender thingy. The G-code viewer, it actually says there. Um, so I just drew this in QCAD, just a um, sample test shape kind of thing. And then I've used Estelcam to generate the G-code for it. And then I just saved that as a file. And then you can, in this G-code sender program, you can open that. It's got load file there, so I just selected my file and it shows up down there. What do I do now? Connect.
Okay, and then I guess I just click send to machine. So that's what I'll do now. And I'll just shift the camera over there so you can see what happens. Okay, oh, that's great. <laughs> it's kind of vibrating. Like I, like I said, the lead nut thingies over there seem to be rattling around a bit, but it did exactly what it was supposed to do. <laughs> Don't worry, it just looks terrible because this is not stuck on properly, see? Let's stick the pen on properly and try again. Okay, so I made a little aluminium bracket and zip tied and foam taped a pen on there and it seems to be a lot more stable now so we shouldn't have any of that wobbling around and it's actually going to draw on paper. And I've set the cutting depth to half a millimeter. So what I'm going to do here is Jog this down to what looks like just under half a millimetre above, or just less than half a millimetre above. That might do it. <laughs> okay, so at that point, now I'm going to reset the Arduino, which I think. That, that would, now it thinks it's at zero, zero, zero. So hopefully this is gonna work. So it lifts up five millimeters to start with. Uh, still too high. Oh, better safe than sorry, I suppose. Okay, so take two, 0 0.8 millimeters now. Ooh, that's better. Now what I think I might do now is I'll just run it again exactly the same and see how well it goes over exactly the same spots. As far as this run goes it looks like it's matched itself up pretty well with the start and end of each line. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. I can't really see any any spots where it's really gone anywhere different than it did just before. Uh, so, I'm going to call it a day for now. Okay, it's the next day now, and I thought I might try measuring how the accuracy of this goes and do some more testing, maybe with a, like a test pattern or something like that can't be too big because I don't have my limit switches on and I don't want to you know, drive it into the edge of the rail or anything. Uh, but I thought what I could do with this for a start is draw a parallel line around the outside, or the, actually it might be the inside. Um, so I haven't moved it since yesterday, so I think I can get this right, but <clears throat> what I'm talking about is we come over here, um, look at this for a moment. So I measured that dimension there, it should be 28 millimeters, 
but when I measured it, it's 29 millimeters, and I think that's okay because if we look at Estelcam, we'll see up there that the settings for the end mill that we're using is one millimeter diameter. So that's a radius of half a millimeter, obviously. So that'll be be a half a millimeter high at the top and a half a millimeter low at the bottom. So that is 29 millimeters. So I think it's pretty pretty accurate as far as dimensions go. Um, so what I'm going to do is reverse these uh, tool paths. <laughs> Oh, that's interesting. It's doing the paths in a different order now. I think this was the order that I set them up in just now. Cool. I just noticed that Estelcam also has an engrave option which is neither outside or inside, it's actually on the line. So we're now going to try putting a line right in the middle of these two lines so there'll be a half a millimeter spacing between this and the other two. doesn't look quite so great. I think the pen might be moving a little bit, but it's not bad. Before doing a proper test pattern, I gave it a try with an imported SVG file. This is something I've been wanting to try for quite a while, so I just uh, wanted to get it out of my system. Well, that turned out alright. Um, some parts the pen didn't draw, but it's not a matter of the pen not being pressed against the paper because I can see the little ridges where it's pressed. So it was like the surface is pretty nice and flat. And that bit there it didn't draw either. Apart from that though, seems really good. It's a tiger, just in case you couldn't tell. So then I made up a proper test pattern in QCAD, this is just one I made up myself, but I've seen a few around and I think the general idea is you want to check how it draws different angles of straight line and some curves, particularly concentric circles. Um, so again some of the ink didn't come out of the pen properly, but that's not a, not really a problem with the CAD machine, uh, with the CNC machine. Um, and I also have a bunch of things of set distances so those lines there are a millimeter apart and the blocks around the edge are one centimeter apart so these should be values that we can measure later. So here are some close-up pictures of those uh, outcomes that should give you a better idea of what uh, they turned out like and you can see that some of these lines here have been done quite well it's only a half a millimeter between these two lines so it's, it's doing all right considering the pen was moving around a little bit Actually, it did not move in the x-axis, so the x is horizontal here, and you can see when it's predominantly moving in the x-axis direction, it's actually pretty good. And when it's predominantly moving in the y direction, like this bit, or when it's starting or stopping moving in the y direction, it um, gets a bit funny. So that's purely from the pen moving around in its mount, I think. Um, and so this one here, um, in this photo it may look a little bit not quite square, but that's just because of the way the camera took this photo, it's not directly above it and has a little bit of um, offset, or what do you call it, diagonal angled from the camera to the paper. But when I measured everything it did look extremely good, and I was worried that 
some of these squares might not actually be squares or rectangles, they might be slightly parallelogram kind of thing. So to check that I measured the different distance from here to here and using the good old Pythagoras' theorem you can uh, calculate how what that distance should be and I measured from corner to corner and then opposite corner to the, that corner and they were exactly the same and they're exactly what they should be too so I'm really quite happy about that um, yeah that's the dimensions uh, yeah so the, again um, the ruler doesn't look like it matches here because of the way that the camera took this photo so this mark is actually on that one and the end of the ruler is on there but you can see it's to, off to the left there and it's off to the right there but um, take my word for it it matches up pretty well so these squares here are one millimeter um, and these are one centimeter looks like they're pretty good there's a little bit of a wobble here which I think may be from the pen moving in its mount um, not really sure but I'm, I think that the precision that we've got with that many steps per millimeter, it's 100 steps per millimeter, I don't think it's the steps precision causing this wibbly wobbly bit here. Um, especially when we see when we're doing, oh, I was going to say when we're doing longer lines, we get less of it, but there's a little bit of a wibble wobble there, but uh, not much. Um, again, these ring sections here missing is just that the ink didn't come out of the pen reliably especially in those directions for some reason um, but yeah it's a nice sort of a spider web looking thing um, not much else to say about that really I think it uh, all turned out quite nicely so I'm really happy with it at this point but keep in mind that I haven't actually loaded it up like I haven't it's not trying to push through anything to cut it it's just sort of moving a pen across the paper which is pretty easy so we're not really you know setting ourselves any kind of a challenge at this point but I'm still quite happy with how it turned out with the accuracy and uh, everything being square so next time I think I might set up the limit switches and um, maybe even put the spindle on and do a bit of hmm who knows maybe even cut something next time not sure what will happen but um, we'll get there when we get there so thanks for watching see ya